Hello and welcome to another Red9 demo. This one is quite a major update to uh, the way we handle IK and FK systems and switching spaces within the rigs. Um, the first thing to say is that all of the stuff we're about to show um, isn't specific to the Red9 rig itself. It's specific to the Pro Meta rig node itself, but it's not specific to the rig structures. We've recently wired up a number of client rigs and they have their own internal rigs for a studio and we've wired some of these systems up to work natively with their rigs. So, that's something to bear in mind. Um, now there's one really big update in this and that is that we finally managed to get IK spines matching FK spines. And that's quite a big deal. Um, let me show you this. This is a, a, one of the tester files that we're using to, uh, to validate some of this data. Now then, if I right click on anything within Red9, whoops, anything within the Puppet rig itself, you'll get the DAG menus. And the DAG menus are node sensitive. We know we're on the spine system. It says there we're on the spine system and it shows us a relevant menu. And down here we've got matching UIs for parent space, for the uh, IKFK systems, and we've got a general match over time. We'll go through all of those later on. I'm just gonna open up the standard matching code. Okay, now then, this file as it currently stands is showing you what happens to the current IKFK sold. This is the one that we currently have out in production at the moment. So what we've got here is, we've got the FK, let's get this out of the way, we'll focus in. That's the FK spine, the one in green here. And this in purple is the current IK spine. This is what our current solver does. Um, and in some respects it's correct because what happens is that if I were to show you the position, this is a position of the IK chest controller and that's a position of the current top FK. And that's generally what happens when we start matching IK to FK, we slap one controller over to the other and make sure we match the spaces that they're in. The problem is with spines, it doesn't work that way. Because obviously with spines, we have the curvature to consider we have the length to consider, and also in our rigs we have a central spine, which we've also got to consider. We've got to try and figure out where to place that to get a better match. And we've never really done that. So if I just refresh that. So this is what we would normally do. This is what clients would currently get. And the issue that, that, that obviously faces is, is, yes, we have to make, match this, but also we have to deal with um, a byproduct of IKFK spines and, and of stretchy spines particularly. Our, our spine is stretchy. Um, and even if I were to turn the stretch on, you would expect that this node would match the position of this. You'd expect the IK to finally go away and say, well, I'm actually going to be in the correct place, but it's not. And there's a reason for that. If we look at the spine, what we do to do a stretch and what most people do to do a stretch is you measure the length, the arc length of the curve itself. This is the spline curve. Um, and the issue is that obviously the spline curve and the length is based on the fact it's a curve and the joints aren't a curve. So there is a discrepancy between the two lengths and you get this overshoot. You see that even with stretch on on our systems, the two don't match. And again, that's a big issue. That's kind of more an issue than the actual position of the spine. Because what it means is that if you're in FK, you've set your shoulders, you've set your position, you've set everything up to be correct. And then when you blend to IK, actually all those move. So all your arms, your clavicles, everything gets shifted out of space. So it's, you know, it's a big issue. And it's not an easy one to fix, which is why it's taken us a while to do it. So if I now come in here and I'm gonna go switch mode, we'll go through this UI um, in another demo uh, or, or later on in this one. Um, I'm gonna do everything static at the moment just to kind of show you what goes on. So what I'm gonna do is this is now running the new solve. And if I go match, what you'll see is that spine now absolutely nails that position. You know, the two are absolutely on top of each other. The curve of the spine has been matched. We've dealt with a central controller. And if I were to do a blend now, you see the top of the spine remains absolutely solid. Yes, there is a slight difference on the inner spine. And there's a very good reason for that. Obviously with FK, you can twist every spine component separately. With an IK spine, you have a twist factor that you send up the spine and the twist will never, you know, we'll never, I say we'll never, but generally you can't match the twist, but we can certainly match the position. So that now is the result of doing an IKFK match as opposed to, let's just jog the frames back because I didn't key that, as opposed to that, which I think you'll agree is um, not particularly good. Most of the time, it's been fine. I mean, uh, uh, you know, the, the, all the animation systems and the clients running stuff, uh, generally it's fine. The, the issue comes really is if you're taking data between Motion Builder and Maya and you're trying to match data more accurately, um, the current solution wasn't really cutting it. So this one will be, will be bound into the, uh, into the binder systems that we've got as well, which again, just gives you that extra bit of confidence that the data coming out between um, an FK bind and an IK will be consistent. 
Uh, while we're in here, what I'm going to do is also show you, just, just roughly go through some of these, and like I say, we'll then move on to another file. Um, so the UI itself has changed quite a lot recently. Um, there's a few things that are fairly obvious, well, hopefully fairly obvious. Um, what it is, is we have a switch mode. The switch mode is basically saying when we press the button, I'm going to switch into this current state, be it IK or be it FK. And add switch key is doing just that. When we switch, do we drop a key on that controller itself to say we are now in that? if you see what I mean. If I don't add a switch key, it'll switch the state, but it won't key the state. Um, the other thing is match over time. Match over time has always been in there. Um, and again, you'll see this, this in the um, parent space UI. It's pretty much exactly the same, except the buttons do slightly different things. Um, by default, match over time, well, we'll leave Smart Bake Off for a minute. By the default, the match over time will do what all of the Red Nine systems do when we say anything to do with time. And that is, we'll run the current timeline or will run over the selected timeline. That's generally what anything with Red9 does with time. But we've added in a new one, which is this manual time that overrides this. So you can specifically say, I am matching between this frame and this frame. And that, that's kind of more relevant if you have a file that's maybe you know, three, let's say 3,000 frames. If you have a file that's 3,000 frames and you wanted to match you know, between frame 125 and what you just can't see it. So it kind of gives us a bit more um, leeway to do things like that. Just makes things a bit easier. Um, we've also added a frame step, so we can match on ones, twos, threes, etc. And we've also matched, added a, a smart bake function. And the smart bake is quite cool. What it does is it extracts the current times from the systems that it finds, and it uses those key times as the switch points. Uh, what does that mean? Um, it means that if you're doing hanky animation, it respects your current keys. It doesn't blat over them. It respects the keys that you're sending in. So if, for example, I were to match this system over time, with smart bake, obviously my FK is keyed on, uh, it's not even keys on, it's keyed randomly by the look of it. If I were to do a smart bake and switch over to the IK, what you'll notice is that the IK then respects those keys that have come in. Um, and in fact, you'll see that what it's done on the matching, there we go, this is the result of the new matching. And the new matching is really quick. It, it, it's an iterative process that we've done to try and match the spine, uh, the spine points. Um, but it's quite a quick one. And like I say, the big thing is it absolutely nails the top of it. So that's that's really important. So a few other things that have gone in. Um, there's been improvements to the leg system and the way we match IKFKs within the leg itself. Well, the leg and the arm, I should say. Um, again, I'm going to switch over to FK mode. And I'm going to do something that normally would destroy a leg. So I'm going to select uh, first controller, just do that, let's say. I'll pick walk down to the calf and I'll spin the calf and we'll come down to the leg and we'll spin it the other way like that and we'll get the toe and we'll maybe put some rotate data into the toe and we'll do a bit of twist and we'll pull it down. That's the kind of thing that would normally destroy an IKFK match. Um, but the new one resolves this pretty well. Uh, this is more specific to the rig, particularly the toe, um, the toe systems and the way the toe behaves. That's not to say we can't overload these for client rigs, but this is more bound to the uh, production rig. If I were to do that, you'll see it maintains pretty much everything, including the toe data, which is now propagated down through to the tap, twist and bend axes. So it's calculated those and it's pushed it through to the IK. The only thing you'll notice that changed was the fact that obviously in an IK solution, we can't bend that lower calf. So obviously that twist has been removed, but the rest of it is again, maintained and uh, positioned correctly. So that's another quite big one. That, so that's kind of an update to the toe systems and the way we extract data for toes and also dealing with twists within lower parts of uh, FK, which again was an issue uh, previously. Let's just zero that off. And then the final one really that's gone in for the IK and FK is, is the autoclave. Now, Autoclave I'll show you uh, running live in a minute. The Autoclave is part of our rig and it's based on the fact that within IK I can lift this and as the arm engages it will lift the clavicle and it does a pretty good job. It's quite accurate and we calibrate it against a file which I'll show you in a minute. So that all happens nicely. The problem is, let me just, in fact, we'll just turn the auto tracker on for that so we don't have to worry about it. The problem is that um, as it comes up, because it's based on the IK system, what happens when we switch over to FK? And, and by default, what happens is that that we turn it off. And, and that seems to be a reasonable supposition. Ba basically, you're saying that this autoclave is based on what's going on within the IK system. It's not based on the FK system, therefore we turn it off. 
That's great, except if I now want to match this and do an IKFK blend, obviously it's going to negate the autoclave and it's going to come down here somewhere, which kind of you know bypasses the need for it. Um, so what we've done is we've figured out a way of baking the autoclave out that it's actually exposed in two places. It's exposed here, oops, hang on a second, it's not exposed there, where are we? But there we go. Bake arm autoclave, it's exposed here, um, and it's also default within the IKFK switching. And what happens with the IKFK is that if it senses when you're switching over to FK, if it senses that the autoclave during that time period that you're about to do is active, it'll turn it off, it'll deactivate it, but it'll pump the transforms back into the clavicle itself to the rotate data. So if I do that now and I go uh, switch mode over to FK, everything is the same, things are in the same position, but actually it's turned the clav off and it's pushed that data into the rotate to the clavicle itself, maintaining a position. So again, it, it's all about maintaining the balance and maintaining poses and maintaining everything when we're switching over. Okay, let's go over some, uh, some live data. I'll just uh, stop this and we'll start again in a second. Okay, so we've, we've had a look on some static files. Let's have a look at a, something a little bit more complicated. Um, this is actually a really important file. Um, as far as the rig's concerned, as far as the systems are concerned, it, it's probably the worst piece of mocap or the most complex piece of mocap we've ever had to deal with. Um, and it's been a really good one for calibrating systems and a making sure that things don't gimbal within the rig when we change systems, etc. Um, there are a few people out there that would probably recognise where this came from. Um, and what I want to do is I want to go through uh, again what we've just been talking about, some of the arcade matching systems and also the parent spacing. Um, obviously, why parent spacing is important. Um, so let's have a look at this, and I'm just going to turn on channel box. Right. So um, we'll do the autoclav first. This position of this autoclave and the position of the way the clavicles work, this is, this is again, the production rig. This is specific to the Red 9 production rig. Um, the way that clavicle is moving and the way it's solved is all mocap currently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all the keys off that, remove any translations that are on it. Uh, we'll turn autoclave on so you just see it's all static, nothing's happening. And if I turn the autoclave on, lo and behold, the clavicle will do pretty much the same as it was doing previously. And there's a reason for that. This is one of the files that we used way back when, when we were designing the rig to calibrate some of the systems and how it reacts. You can see it does a really nice job. So uh, I'm going to put this, this arm here into FK mode. Um, I'm not going to use smart bait. There's no point. This is baked on um, per frame data. It's key. It's dense data. I could, if I wanted to key it on fives, tens, um, again, I'm just going to do it on, uh, on frame range, uh, sorry, on single steps. Um, and I will switch it from, let's say, from kind of 40 up to, that'll do, up to, up to there, let's say, up to 256. Now then, I could, if I wanted to, turn man manual range on and just grab that time, or I can just use the selected time range, I'll use the selected. And I'm going to switch over to FK. I'll turn the add switch key on because we need that. And you'll see it'll do three passes. Only if it does three passes if it finds that the autoclave is turned on because the first two passes are the first one is it caches it, second one is it then pushes that cache transform back to the um, to rotational data of the controller, then the third one is the IKFK match itself. And you see we now have keys on the controller, it goes up and the autoclave will switch off, the rotate translates, hit in, and then it'll stop and go back to autoclave. So it baked all that system out, and you'll see as well if we come back in. You select the FK, there's the FK arm. Again, that gets turned off when we switch it in and it will turn back on again. So that's a really nice one of, of the switching itself. The spine is the same kind of thing. The, the spine in this case is baked out IK and FK data through the binder. Um, and for some of it, it's, it's not that relevant or it's not that obvious. So let's just zoom out of this thing. Let's find something like that. I'm going to try and find a position where it's fairly obvious what's going wrong. It's, as I say, it's pretty good on this one because of the way that the data was uh, solved in the first place. And I, it'd be subtle or I can't find a position where it, uh, that's kind of a, a good, good example. Um, the biggest issue, as I say, was when we go between IK and FK, we get this. The spine changes its position very slightly because it can't get that top solve. It can't resolve it properly. So again, if I, I uh, will switch modes. Uh, I'll tell you what, well, let's, let's just switch from there to there. In fact, we are in, we are in FK, like we're in IK at the moment. Let's delete that and switch over to FK. OK, 
case. So this this might be a bit more obvious actually. So if we do that, yeah, there we go. There's, a, there's the change. In it. Okay, so we're in FK mode at the moment. You can see the, the FK controllers for our rig. Now we go, and uh, we will go between there and there, and we'll switch over to IK okay, match. Switch T, switch systems. Uh, we're doing this area here. We'll go switch. Now this is iteratively doing that fit to try and get the spine fitting. So again, it's pretty quick at what it does. There it is. It's switched over at that point. And when we switch between IK and FK, now the whole top of that character stays exactly where it is. The only difference you see is a very slight difference in the twist. It's done, you know it's doing a really good job at matching this. So that's IK FK switching. Um, let's go into parent spaces. Okay, let's uh, let's reset the file. No, let's not reset the file. We'll carry on with the file as we've got it. Remember, this uh, this clavicle here is still being driven by the autoclave, so there's no data on it. Let's zoom that out. It's fine a bit where it's really obvious. Okay, this is a good one. This is a perfect example of why we need parent switching. Um, we've got a really complicated piece of data here. At the moment, the feature in world space. If we come down the rig, rig has this thing main. Uh, that tells us we're in, in world space, and that basically means that whatever I do to the rest of the rig, that foot will stay locked in place. That's great, except obviously during something like this, that makes it really difficult to modify that data because really you want those back to the hips. And that's exactly what we'll do. Let's let's switch that leg, for example, over to hip space. Now then you'll see when we select the differences come up. So this is the limb system, this is the arm system we've got selected. There's the leg system, we've only got three options. So it shows you the options we've got. That's running a callback. You see here, run callbacks. The callback are selection based and time based. And they're only active when the UI is active or when that checkbox is active. Obviously they have a slight impact on, on the, the speed of playback because it's, it's running it per frame. Uh, and you'll see why in a second. So from there, three, four, seven, I'm just gonna select some time. And we'll do that whole section down till there. And I'm gonna switch it into hip space. Again, not going to bother smart baking, it's dense baked data. Switch space, off it runs, nice and quick. Bink. Again, it's a double pass. One is it caching the data, second is it applying the data. And you'll notice as we come into this thing, the UI will change. I can't remember what frame I did it on. 300 and something or other, wasn't it? There we go, there's the frame switch. You can see it's switching there in the UI. So you can kind of get a better idea of what's going on. There's the actual attribute being switched. And obviously it's the same data, you don't notice any difference, but if we were to now modify that, and you were to modify the hips, for example, which is obviously what it's been baked to, that thing is now in hip space. But nothing's changed. All we've done is switch the spaces and we've compensated for it on the fly. Uh, and we can do it over multiples. Obviously I could do both legs at the same time, which maybe would have been a better idea. Um, it's pretty fast, you know, this is, this is running some really complicated data. I'm just gonna go there, switch. Again, double pass. Yeah, get on with it. There we go. And that's done both of them at the same point. So they're both now in hip space at the same time. And we come halfway through this sequence and we can just go actually, which makes it 2000 times. Oh, I didn't, I didn't do that one. Maybe I didn't have it selected. Um, but it obviously makes it a hell of a sight easier editing this stuff. And you can make these decisions as you go along. You know, it might be that you're scratching your head and while you're scratching your head, you might want to switch to headspace. Um, as long as the rig supports it. Again, most of the stuff I'm showing here is based on the Metadata Pro. It's based on this Pro node that we have. And that's just like a glove. It fits over the top of the rig and it dictates where we find data. It's not specific primarily to our rig. Autoclave is, that's part of our system. Um, same with the toe. But the way we solve everything else is, is fairly generic. Hopefully that wasn't too fast. Hopefully I went through things um, fairly clearly. Um, by all means, ping me if you have any questions. Uh, this will be going out to clients fairly shortly. The spine, we still have some work to do on it. We're still thinking we can get it faster and, and, and more accurate. Um, some of the other stuff is, is pretty much ready to go into production now. So um, keep, keep watching. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.